Are you superstitious? No one wants to be called superstitious, but to borrow from Michael Scott of NBC's The Office, I'm not superstitious, but I am a little stitious. Now we laugh at that, but the word superstition literally means an excessive reverential belief in supernatural beings. Now as Christians, we shouldn't be looking for the devil behind every corner, but we should be a little stitious, not being ignorant of spiritual realities, but also not being obsessed with or fearful of them. With that said, here are three simple truths about the spiritual realm. First, we are spiritual beings. Second, Satan and demons are real. And third, we are at war. First, we're, we're spiritual beings. We're not simply flesh and blood. This is a principle that we see Jesus articulate in each of the gospels. For example, do not fear those who kill the body but cannot kill the soul, Matthew 10, 28. Or that which is born of the flesh is flesh and that which is born of the spirit is spirit, John 3, 6. Saying that we are spiritual beings is a recognition that this world is not all that there is. It's a statement that while this body may decay, there is an aspect that will continue on. We're not merely biological beings, meaning that even though biology says that every seven to 10 years, every cell in your body is replaced, if you were to make a plea to a judge that a bomb you set off 30 years ago was set off by a completely different biological person, not a single cell remains of that person biologically, you're a new human twice over, maybe even three times, we all know that wouldn't hold up in a jury or by a judge. Biology is not all that we look at at humanity we recognize that there is something more to a person. We're spiritual beings. And second, Satan and demons are real. And here's where I might be going a bit too far for some, especially in our city, where we have a lot of people who are spiritual but not religious, looking to spirituality as a means of caring for their soul. But the idea of a personal Satan or demons is a step too far. But the Bible argues that there is a power behind the disruption we find in our souls and the disruption of peace in our world. Jesus says, your enemy, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. Dr. L. Andrew DeBanco, professor of American studies and self-proclaimed secular liberal atheist, wrote a book called The Death of Satan, How America Lost Their Sense of Evil. And in it, he writes, if you say the devil is all the problem, if you say the reason things go wrong is because the devil makes them do it, on the one hand, you get rid of evil. But the devil made me do it means it's not my fault, right? But if you get rid of Satan, if you don't believe that evil has a, super, a supernatural transcendent side, if there is no supernatural, how do we explain atrocities? Why does one nation wipe another nation out? Why does a mother or father in Indiana starve their little child? If there is no supernatural evil, then it's either a product of their biology, their social conditioning, or psychological conditioning, and evil disappears once again. You see, without Satan, you cannot be really outraged. You don't have the moral vocabulary unless you believe in transcendent evil and imminent evil. We're spiritual beings. Satan and demons are real. And one more, we are at war. Humanity has been in this war since our beginning. We have often fooled ourselves into thinking we can be ambivalent or agnostic about this war, but we're all on one side or the other. Recently, my wife and I took our children to the Nature Museum in Lincoln Park, and as we were looking at the frog exhibit, my wife pointed to a dish with a worm on it and said, that's the American church. So I obviously asked what she meant, and you see that the worm was on a dish surrounded by all sorts of fruit. Surely the worm thought it was the best day of its life with all this food. Mr. Worm didn't know that he was actually the food. Throughout most of the Western world, we're surrounded by luxuries of technology, food, entertainment. These and under in other industries build themselves to utmost importance in our lives and become idols. But don't be fooled. Just as the Apostle, says, Apostle Paul said in 1 Corinthians 10, 20, the idols that the people sacrificed to were demons. So too is their spiritual warfare warring for our hearts and minds. Friends, we're at war. In our context, we're often blind to it. I tried and failed to find out who this quote originated with, but I, I think it's absolutely right. Satan is like a lizard in the desert. Either he puffs himself up to look bigger, or he plays dead. Or in the words of Verbal from the movie The Usual Suspects, the greatest trick the devil ever pulled was convincing the world he didn't exist. Nevertheless, the good news we cling to is that for those whose allegiance is to King Jesus, we can say with 1 John 4, 4, he who is in us is greater than he who is in the world. Because of Jesus' great power and his work in us, we can trust James 4, 7 stands true. If we submit ourselves to God and resist the devil, he will flee. We're spiritual beings. Satan and demons are real. We are at war.
So church, make war. <laughs>